Catherine, the French girl, was a statue. She had the same smile, nose, mouth, chin, and forehead. As a child, she had been idolized in her hometown during a religious celebration. It started almost like a dream. As your host, I propose that we shall abolish all our formalities forever by drinking this best wine in my brother. Jules vanished for a month. He saw Catherine alone, but the two friends met at the gymnasium. Hey Jill, why don't you spend the night with me and Catherine? I've talked about you so much. She's very anxious to know you better. But not this one, Jill, okay? Him. <laughs> hey, do you like our friend Thomas? Can we go out with him? Not bad. A mustache will help. I dreamt I met him in an elevator. We had a child, and I never saw him again. Poor Napoleon. I was thought, Our Father, who art in heaven. I thought it said art. I imagined my father with an easel, painting in paradise. I believe I said something funny. Or at least amusing. He might try to smile. <laughs> Will anyone come and scratch my back? The Lord scratch him. Those who scratch themselves. What? The Lord scratches. Those. <laughs> you two, you talk and hang about. Before I was always glum. <laughs> but that is over. Now it is. <laughs> Jules was pale, silent, unsure of himself, and more handsome. Catherine had a triumphant smile. No one spoke about her drunk. I've arrived. Please, Mr. Jim. No, just Jim. Just Jim. I want to ask you some advice. Will you come to the coffee shop at 7 tomorrow? Yes, she wants to talk to you. Right, I'll be there at 7.
Jim was late as usual because he was an optimist. He was afraid she had already left. Jim thought a girl like that might well have left at 7.01, would probably not have waited. A girl like that might have just walked in, without noticing me behind my newspaper and left. He kept repeating a girl like that, but what was she like? For the first time, he began to think of her. Jim, did I wake you up, Jim? We're going to my country to get married. Congratulations, Jules. Tell her I'm sorry I was late. I waited almost till 8. She's more optimistic than you. She was at the hairdresser. And arrived at 8 to have dinner with you. If I had known she'd come, I could have waited until midnight. Catherine wants to speak with you. Hello, Jim. I'm very happy, Jim. Jules is going to teach me French boxing. With an Austrian accent. I have lost my accent. My French is perfect. <laughs> A few days later, war was declared. This 
starting us with Debbie Finch. I work on them all week, write them Friday night, and send them airmail next week. And you? I'm doing a book about brother guys. I'm writing it for a book. Catherine is illustrating it. She goes with me into the swamp. I'm going to build a pond in the garden. One day, perhaps, I will become a literary and write a love story with insects as characters. I have a bad tendency to specialize. I admire your versatility, Jim. For me, I am a fa failure. So my teacher taught me all. What do you want to do, he asked. I said, I want to be a diplomat. Do you have money? No. Are you related to anyone famous? Yes. No. Then forget about diplomacy. But what can I ever go? Curious. There's no part of that. Not yet. Travel, write, translate. Learn to lead anywhere, beginning now. There's a future in it. The French have ignored the world for too long. A paper will always pay for your fun. Jules thinks he has a bright future. So do I. But it may not be spectacular. Jules works and sleeps here. Iris organizes a monastery. Jules writes his books. And hunts his insects. Jules and Jim carried on their conversation. Dangerous. I want to talk to you. What do you think of her? Marriage and motherhood suit her. I'm afraid she will leave us. Impossible. No. She has done it already. It lasted six months, and I gave up hope. She's ready to do it all again.